making sure that my hunter and mage are alive and more than making sure that their hunter and their mage are dead. So I'm gonna run straight at this AMC. I'm gonna grab him, try to push him into the wall, use my ulti for CC immunity so that the Ymir can't freeze me and then get myself out of the tower range. Now I can walk right back inside. And I'm gonna go looking at this Ymir. I'm gonna push him back into a wall try to body block him mess up on the body block a little bit there but we're still going to be able to grab the kill so hello everybody we are here with your cousin bow support guide so we're going to be starting off with our traditional support action we're going to be getting ourselves a sentinel's gift i'm going to start myself right into uh, my gauntlet of Thebes or the mail of renewal if I so desire with a chalice of healing and our magic shell Kuzenbo, uh, a perpetually underrated uh, Character in the game. Uh, you can probably get away with him in solo lane as well right now uh, But mostly known for his support gameplay uh, and I actually think that he is quite good at being a support he's more of an aggressive support slash annoying support so kind of in the realm of like the kumba karnas um of the world that's kind of uh where you're putting the kappa so i'm gonna get my one at level one this is a ricochet like ability just like who ye and so i'm gonna sit here and try to get a little uh triple bounce at the start try to clear out these side harpies as fast as possible now i gotta be a little bit careful because i don't want to do the purple buff entirely before my um hunter gets here and you have to keep in mind that the little uh nay nay will will kill that purple buff if you're not careful so just make sure you don't accidentally kill that big purple buff and then put your adc really far behind at level two, we are going to grab our three. Some people like to get the blink on Kuzenbo first. Um, it is very viable because of the three being able to push people through minions and do a ton of damage. But in general, I wouldn't recommend um, going the super aggressive um, blink start strat unless you were a lot more confident uh, in your gameplay. Nobody shams me. And it's just generally advisable to get the shell first. The shell is always a good active and you're gonna have to get it no matter what. I typically prefer to get the blink second um, just because the shell is gonna make it safe friend land both for you and your hunter. So I'm gonna try to wait for your mirror to use an ability. The second he starts to cast an ability, I'm gonna try to move in a little bit farther, but he's actually playing it really, really far back. He's actually done the boosh, boots rush start. So he's gonna try, he doesn't have any potions. So he's gonna be trying to rush his boots as fast as humanly possible and getting extra damage online that way. Level three, I'm gonna grab another point in my one. This is the main ability that we are going to rank up first. As you can see, it's gonna be our main source of poke here. It is damage and a slow, and then it summons the Kappa. That Kappa will do things like tanking a tower for you. Our three is our movement ability. Gonna throw down a shell for my Arachne just so we can tank it a little bit longer. Not quite gonna be gonna able to get out of there, but he does grab a kill. Not a horrible trade, especially if the Amir doesn't have enough cash to actually finish his boots. Their purple is going to be coming up soon. We know that because our purple just spawned. So we can move right over to it. And I can try to get myself just a nice little bounce. Nothing spectacular. Just a little double bounce right there to get that damage off. And then I will take this purple. Give my Izanami uh, our purple. Really good dive right there from our Izanami as well. At level four, we are going to grab our two. That is going to be the ability that we traditionally max out last. So for our level order on Kuzumbo, it's going to be four for the extra damage. It's going to be then the one for the extra damage, then the three, and then the two. The two is interesting, but it really doesn't become super strong until the late stages of the game. Uh, once you get into team fights, uh, this is when this ability really starts to thrive. Um, it also makes Kuzumbo paired uh, with Boomba's hammer a really interesting thing for those that want to do a spicy Kuzumbo jungle. Um, there's a really interesting interaction because this is going to actually lower your cooldowns 
of all your other abilities but it really doesn't become effective until it's all the way max ranked but it's only when we're getting hit so we want to be tanky before we're really utilizing it in order to be tanky we need to be a little bit later in the game because we need our items online so that's why our official level order of kuzumo is four one three two you probably could get away with going four one two three um but once you start getting damage off with the three pushing people through their minions uh you'll never you'll never go back it is a good feeling Kuzumbo's three has some of the highest like level one damage in the game so the way that you use it is you have to push an enemy through some creeps uh, it has to either basically be their creeps or like a neutral um camp it can't be your own but if you do manage to push them through it does so much damage so much damage it's also a great displacement in general um i would recommend pairing kuzumbo with a more aggressive pvp style hunter i think the danza burrows uh and hers of the world is an army is actually interesting um but she clears the wave so fast that you actually lose a little bit um of your your kuzumbo fight potential which is kind of funny um izanami is great for that clear but that clear kind of messes you up a little bit so my izanami is walking forward she's getting a little bit caught out i wanted to back but now i'm actually going to go back and try to help out i'm just going to grab this ymir and try to pull him back a little bit out of position my izzy is over the wall if she would have just stayed over here we probably could have just gone for the ymir because i could have just ultied him but i didn't really know where he was walking and what i really want to do right now is back more so than anything but if they're gonna move up a little bit i gotta keep my eyes on this ymir ymir slightly moving himself up out of position i know that his freeze is down so i'm gonna try to grab him push him out of position and then use my ultimate to displace him hopefully long enough for the izanami to grab the kill just like that we'll grab this next wave and now i'm gonna actually back i'm gonna go immediately into my gauntlet of thebes because with an izanami she's gonna be able to stack that for me really really quick i'm also going to be spending a little bit more time over here in the duo lane and i'm going to grab a couple of wards to help get out those deep wards for my izzy so for my boots on kuzumbo i'm going to go the cooldown boots i like to be a little bit more aggressive uh standardly with my boot play style what is this horrible bounce location just give me a regular bounce baby um so I'm gonna go the cooldown boots. If you didn't want the cooldown boots, you can always go the reinforced greaves. Reinforced greaves are great tank boots right now, um, particularly when you've paired with something like a Pridvin in the Mail of Renewal. You're gonna get a lot of those bonus protections going, which gives you those bigger shield procs. All good things. But I am more of a CDR guy on that. So I'm looking right here. At this Ymir. I don't even need to go for the Merlin. I'm just going to push him right into the wall. Going to get a little bit of that proc damage for my three. Slow him down. I'm going to pop my two just to see if he turns around and fights me. He is not. My Arachne is ulting out. I'm going to make sure she doesn't get chased by anybody. She is not going to. And I'm going to go put down some aggressive wards into their jungle. Throw out an aggressive ward at top left. And I'm going to throw another ward actually farther over here. Uh, by the tier two tower that way we can see when the hunter and the support are actually coming in from that direction as far as laning phase matchups go nothing that kuzenbo uh particularly hates to go against um he's kind of like kumba karna um in that regard, so I'm gonna try to push this Ymir through some creeps. You can kind of see the damage that goes on him. I'm gonna hit him with the one and then the ultimate, which is gonna make me CC immune, and we're gonna be able to grab a quick kill. Kuzumbo is just plain annoying. He's got movement, he's got good CC with the displacement, he's got a slow, he's got a knockup, he's got CC immunity. He's just an extremely annoying god. Very much like Kumakarna, one of those characters where if you don't know what to pick, you can always pick the Kuzumbo in the support role. Now, in general, he is a more aggressive support. He is not a defensive support. So if your style um, is more in the line of 
Geb or Kepri or Sylvanas, one of those very defensive characters. Kuzumbo is probably not so much up your play style, but if you're more of a Sobek kind of guy, a Ymir Ares, then Kuzumbo is gonna be right up your alley. So I'm gonna go ahead back up, grab my CDR boots and a Sentry Warren. For my next item, I'm gonna go right into Mail of Renewal. Mail of Renewal, just one of the best items in the game right now. Stat-wise, it's just unbeatable. 2,400 gold, a bunch of HP, a bunch of protections, plus a giant heal for yourself when you're already stacking up HP because of your Thebes, because of the Mail of Renewal, because of your Sentinel's Gift that you're going to level up. No matter what build you end up running, it's always just going to be stupidly, stupidly sad efficient. And it's not a selfish item because it's also going to heal your team. So it's also a great sustain item for the entire squad. Literally no reason not to pick it up right now. I like to try to get it third because if you can get it by third item, you traditionally will have it up by the team fight stage of the game. My goal on Kuzenbo is going to be um, to dive into the back line. So Kuzenbo can peel, um, but he plays more like a solo laner than he does a traditional support. So a lot of the times my goal on Kuzenbo is gonna be less on making sure that my hunter and mage are alive and more than making sure that their hunter and their mage are dead. So I'm gonna run straight at this AMC. I'm gonna grab him, try to push him into the wall, use my ulti for CC immunity so that the Ymir can't freeze me, and then get myself out of the tower range. Now I can walk right back inside. And I'm gonna go looking at this Ymir. I'm gonna push him back into a wall, try to body block him, mess up on the body block a little bit there, but we're still gonna be able to grab the kill. So one interesting thing to note about Kuzumbo is that your two doesn't just proc off of um, enemy gods. It also procs off of minions. So this cooldown per hit, if I say walk over to, these oracles are actually a horrible example. Uh, so I'm not gonna do it on the oracles because the oracles cast this stupid little purple buff. Here we go, now I'm gonna do it. If I pop my two and you watch my cooldowns, you're gonna see how fast my one and my three are coming up. That means that as Kuzumbo, one strategy that you want to do, which is not uh, super typical of the other uh, gods, is you actually want to take the minion aggro. Minion aggro being on you on Kuzumbo is a really good thing because when it's on you, then you just pop your shell spikes and you're gonna get that lowered cooldown on your one and your three. So preferably as a Kuzumbo, you want to be tanking as many minions as humanly possible, whether you're fighting in the jungle and you can quickly get yourself a little, um, a little jungle camp pulled to get those cooldowns going, whether you're in the middle of a wave and you can be uh, aggroing on to those minions to get them hitting you. Either way, really, really helpful because as soon as they start hitting you and you pop your two, you're gonna get those cooldowns lowering, lowering, lowering. And especially at the end of the game, when you have this up to 1.3 seconds cooldown per hit, it snowballs like crazy. It also works really well if you already have a little bit of CDR built into your kit, which is why I'm gonna go into a fourth item Pridvin. Pridvin just scales so well right now. The Thebes, Mail of Renewal Pridvin build, I find on support is just disgustingly good. Tons of protections, tons of cooldown, tons of HP. And as long as you have the cooldown boots, then the mana really shouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna kind of zone out this Shamir, just walk at him, keep him a little bit away from my Yannis. I'm gonna pop my two. Another thing about the two that you should know is that you can actually use Kuzumbo two while you're CC'd. So it works like a um, Aphrodite ult in that regard. So even if you're already CC'd, I'm gonna try to push this Jameer through minions, not quite gonna be able to get him, that's okay. Gotta pop my two, which is going to immediately bring back up my one and my three. You can see how strong that Kuzumbo two becomes when you're already tanking minions. You get those cooldowns back up instantly. Absolutely instantly. 
for our standard combination here on Kuzenbo. We're going to be trying to pull people with our three. After we pull them with our three, we have two options. We're either going to hit them with our one. If we're just trying to get a little bit of poke, it's nothing too serious. We don't think we're going to be able to get the kill. Or we can throw down our ultimate if we think there's going to be enough follow-up to actually grab the kill. So most of the time, it's just going to be a little three, pull them out of position, hit them with the slow at the end annoy them but when you're actually going to commit to the kill when you're like okay yeah they are actually low enough for me to get the kill right there then you do the three immediately into the ultimate because the ultimate is going to continue to knock them up for another two seconds provide a lot of cc and then you follow up with your one which is going to then provide the slow so now you push somebody out of position you've knocked them up over and over and over again and you slowed them continuously. That's a lot of very good, very aggressive CC. So at this point, we really need to make sure that we are getting uh, these scorpions down. We want to make sure that we actually have the objective spawning. Uh, we probably should have done the scorpion maybe even as early as like five minutes ago at this point. Now we're going to go ahead, back it up. And now I'm going to get that mail of renewal online. And I'm also going to get my blink as well as rank up my shell. Right about your third item is probably when you should be considering ranking up that shell. When you're getting into those team fights, you want to make sure you have those block stacks on board. Two block stacks per person. You got 10 for your team. That can really help keep your team alive. Uh, particularly in this meta uh, where we're seeing a lot of hunters being played. Nothing like stopping two crits on a squishy on your team. That's a very big deal. Gonna throw down a sentry ward over here on the fire giant. We've already got some vision over on the gold fury uh, because of the oracles. So I don't need to worry about vision there. And then I'm actually going to head over Attack towards that gold fury. fury as well. We got it to spawn, so now we can try to do it. Freedom! After this gold fury, our next objective is probably going to be that tier two tower over in the right lane. I hear some people over by the red buff, so I'm going to run this way. I see that Merlin has used his flicker. If he stops for these bat camps, I might be able to kill him. Ymir is probably going to try to stop me. There he goes. I'm going to push Merlin right into this wall. Now, my Arachne doesn't actually know that his flicker is down, but I'm going to continue to dive it. I'm going to tank the tower for my Arachne so he can run right in here. I'm going to pop that shell. I'm going to push Ymir away out through some creeps. We're going to grab the kill on that. I need to run back through to help out my Arachne. I tanked it for her a little bit. She grabs a kill right here, and we should be able to run right back out. Actually, we've got some creeps over in left lane because Izanami is pushing up. I'm going to keep these creeps alive by tanking. I'm going to summon a little Kappa. My little Kappa will also tank, so I'm going to try to reset this back onto the creeps and the little Kappa. Unfortunately, it looks like a tier is going to be able to get over here. And now I need to zone out this tier from my Izanami. Your team Looks like he might want to try to blink or something. So I'm going to just try to keep him in combat. But I can't stop him from coming all the way over. The Izanami uses her ulti and silences him out of the ability. What a good Izanami ultimate right there. Now our team has distracted over in right lane with a couple of people. So we might actually be able to shove up for this left lane. I'm going to throw up my Kappa, so my Kappa will tank just a um, shot or two. It actually bounces off of the Phoenix. That was weird, even though it didn't say it was going to bounce, so that's fine. But we are going to be able to grab this Phoenix over here on the left-hand side. And then run away! But that was a good play from the team right there. Now I need to start working on uh, my Pridvin. Right about this time in the game, uh, around your... Um, fourth item is also about the time you're going to be able to rank up your gift. So I don't want to use all my gold right here because I know that I'm going to be able to rank up this Sentinel's gift in one level. And it looks like if I head over to the right hand side, I'll be able to just run through this jungle and grab it. So I'm actually going to grab the tier one in order to get uh, the extra 10% CDR. And then I'm just going to kind of run through this jungle. My Arachne doesn't really need it. He's about to get level 20. And I'm going to try to get that level 17 and then rank up my starter item before I grab this Pridvin. Pretty much all cases, every god across the board uh, being able 
to rank up your starter is always the move. The faster you can rank up your starter, the better. They are the best items in the game, and some of them are more so than others. Uh, and you have a very good one on support. Uh, Sentinel's Gift into Sentinel's Embrace is really, really strong. Gonna grab ourselves another Sentry Ward. We've got 3,000 HP, 222 Physical Protections, 195 Magical, and we haven't even finished our Pridvin yet which is gonna give us a giant shield based off of, of course, all the enemy has been slain. Freedom! Now we've got ourselves a sub 20 minute fire giant. A sub 20 minute fire giant means that we can start pushing into these phoenixes early Two and down. hard. And so now our goal is gonna be to grab this mid phoenix, grab this right phoenix, make the fire giant excuse me, make the Titan as weak as possible and use our bonus fire giant damage to take it all down. So I'm just gonna shove right here through the middle lane. Izanami's over and right, but she's by herself with the Ymir. There's already four people dead, so we don't gotta worry about any of that. We should be able to basically just run it. We don't even need to go towards that right-hand side Phoenix. So I'm just gonna come right in here towards the Titan. Gonna start tanking it for my team. Titan's doing a bit of a number on me, so I'm gonna use this Yanis ulti to get out. We do have uh, some creeps in here that can tank it for us if we need them to. Unfortunately, the Titan is kind of getting brought back into their fountain. We need to be a little bit careful right here. I'm gonna pop a little preemptive shell for the team. I need to get myself out of this fight, so I'm gonna try to pull the Ymir into kind of an awkward location. Pop my two while I am sunned, and we're gonna be able to wrap that one up right there. So for our last item, that would have been a Pridvin. And then after Pridvin is where I really have my situational items right now. This game, it probably would have been a Spirit Robe. Spirit Robe would have capped out my CDR. It would have basically capped out my protections. Plus it would have started to give me some percent mitigations. If they would have had a lot of crit going, it would have been a uh, Spectral Armor. And if I needed any anti-heal, there's a good chance that I would have grabbed something uh, like a Pestilence or a Contagion earlier in the game and then have been finishing up with that Pridvin uh, or that Mail of Renewal a little bit later, guys. And that is our Kuzumbo support guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.